Hello guys, this is Deepika from mytutorialrack.com. In this tutorial, we will talk about the Salesforce object search language in detail. Now, this SOSL is basically used to search for a particular text across different objects and we are not aware of which objects the particular text lies in. So, in those cases, you're going to go ahead and use the SOSL. SOSL is used to construct the text-based text-based search queries against the search index. Now you can look for any kind of text, email field or a phone field across different objects. You can search the text, email and phone fields for multiple objects including the custom objects as well as the standard objects. Or you can run the SOSL query in the, these following environments. You can run it in using a SOAP or a REST call in the Apex statements, you can write a SOSL in using the Visual Force Controller. You can write an SOSL as well as in the Schema Explorer also. You'll be able to use the SOSL. So these are the places where you can run an SOSL query. Now let's take a look at the how the query looks like. The syntax of the SOSL. So the most important clause in the SOSL syntax is the find clause. That is one of the required clause. And you, after the required clause, you can have n numbers of option clauses like object type, fields, data categories, etc. So these are the different, you can filter your data by using one of these optional clauses. But only the most important required clause is the find clause. Now, in the SOSL, while writing an SOSL, you can even determine what you want it to be returned or which particular fields of that particular object do you want back from the result. So you can even specify the data that you want to be returned and uh, you can even specify the order of the result and also how many time, how many number or how many rows that you wanted to return from that SOSL query. So you can specify all that using these option clauses. The required clause is the find clause. So this is how a SOSL query looks like. As you can see, there is a find that is a required clause and then there is the text that you wanted to search. And then you have these option clauses like search group, returning the field spec, which fields do you want it to return, convert the currency. If the currency of the user and the organization is different, then you can use this method to convert the currency into the user's currency. The format if with the division filter, you can use this particular filter when you have working in multiple divisions. Um, and with data category, with snippet, with network ID spec, with price book ID, metadata, etc. And limit how many rows that you wanted to return. So you can even provide the limit of the rows as well. So this is how the SOSL looks like. Now let's talk about each of these clause in the detail. So we will start with the convert currency. As you can see, there is a clause available called convert currency. And then you provide the amount. So this is an optional clause. If an organization has multi-currency enabled, this particular clause will help to convert the currency fields to the user's currency. So if, the, if your organization is multi-currency, then this particular clause will be useful to you guys. Find and then the search query. What are you looking for? If let's say you are looking for the account Bank of America across the account records, then you can use this find clause and then you can write down what text are you looking for. So this is a required clause format. This is also a optional clause for the SOSL. And this particular clause, this particular clause is used to apply the localized formatting to the standard and the custom number, date, time and currency field. So that is the purpose of the format clause in search group. This is important. This is an option clause and this is, tells you the scope of the fields that you want to search for. So let's say, are you interested in looking at only the name field of a particular object or are you interested in the phone fields of a particular object or are you interested in the email field of, let's say you're looking for um, info at mytutorialrack.com. So that's an email. So you know that you're only looking for the email field. So you don't have to specify in all fields. All fields is going to look at each and every field of that object and look for the text info at my tutorial rack. But if you are specified in the scope as that, okay, only in the email fields, then it is only going to look at the email field of those account records. So this is what the search group is for.
there are different different values that are available all fields name fields email fields phone fields sidebar fields etc these are very self explanatory so these are the different types of search group that you can specify it is basically the scope of the fields that you wanted to search returning the field spec as i already told you using the sosl query you can even specify what kind of values or what kind of fields you wanted to return back from the query so this is also a option clause and whatever the information that you want to return in the search result you are going to specify here you can specify list of one or more objects and you can also specify within that particular object which kind of fields are you interested in limit n so limit n as a name indicates this is basically specifies the maximum number of rows that has to be returned from the query and the maximum number should be less than or up to 2000 so maximum number that you can return is 2000 from this so if you say limit n limit is equals to 100 then only the top 100 rows will get will be returned for that query if you specify okay give me all the account starting with the letter n and you're saying limit n limit 5 so it'll only going to give you the top 5 records or account name starting with the letter n so this is what the limit n is used for it specifies the maximum number of rows to return in the text query and it can be up to 2000 offset n this is important when you're expecting large number of results and if you don't want to display all the results in on single page you can use this offset query or offset clause basically to divide or to display the results in multiple pages so you can use this offset and you can specify that okay on one page only show me 10 records so let's say if the 100 records is returned from the salesforce uh, from the sosl query then each of the offset is going to be of 10 records then it will go to the next page to show the next 10 and then the next 10 will be in the third page so fourth and so on so this is basically when you are expecting large number of results you can use the offset to display the results in multiple pages order by so let's say you wanted to go ahead and order the results of a query by the name so let's say you wanted to order by the last name so it will going to go ahead and arrange those records in the alphabetical order so it specifies the order in which the search results are returned using the order by clause we're going to go ahead and take an example of most of these in the upcoming tutorial so i'm just going to give you an overview on the syntax and what are the different clauses the optional clauses etc in this tutorial but we're going to go ahead and do a lot of examples in the next tutorial then with the next clause that we have is the to label and then you specify the fields This basically is also an option clause. The result from a query are returned translated into the user's language. So whatever the results are going to be returned, it will be returned in, and translated into the or whatever the preference of the user is. Where and the condition expression. So let's say you're looking for all the accounts where the number of contacts are more than three, or let's say you're looking for a particular account for created last year. So that's a where clause where you're specifying. So a SOSL query on an object retrieves all the rows that are visible to the user by default that is what the default is SOSL query is going to return you all the rows of a particular object that are visible to the user but if you want to limit the search you can filter the search result by a specific field value so let's say only give me the records which were created after or in the third quarter so you can specify those thing using the where clause with division filter If an organization uses the divisions filters are the search result based on values for the division field so only in that particular division field it's going to go ahead and look for so filters all the search results based on the value for the division field so whatever the division field you have specify only for that particular it will return you based on the values of that division field with metadata This is an optional clause specifies if the metadata is returned in the response. So if you want the metadata to be returned, then you're going to specify it. The default setting is no means by default metadata information will not be returned. But if you want the metadata information, you can use this clause to specify that. Then there is another one with network and then you can network ID spec. This particular clause filters the results by the community ID. and then we have with price book id this is also an optional clause this filters the product search results by a single price book id 
So these are the different clause that are available in the SOSL. You do not have to you do not have to go deep into each of those. I just wanted to give you an overview of all of these so that you get an idea. In the next tutorial, we are going to go ahead and look at our requirement where you're going to use an SOSL query to fulfill the requirement that we have. So I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you so much.